Karen, you know, lots of people use astrology in order to help navigate their lives, mm-hmm. right? Do you yep. do the astrology thing? I used to a lot more when I was younger. I haven't done it in quite a while. Okay. Well, you know, people use it for everything from their love lives to whether or not to cross the street that day, all that kind of stuff, everything in between, mm-hmm. right? But have you ever heard of using astrology to help you know when and how much to work out? I have not. Well, you're in luck because our next guest knows just how to do that. And she's going to share that and lots more on this episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The The Skeptic Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And we are so glad that you could join us for this episode, which I'm sure is going to change the way you look at physical activity. (laughs) Tandy Gutierrez is the founder and creator of Unicorn Wellness. It's an online studio that's been bringing Tandy's unique blend of wellness and fitness to subscribers throughout the US, Europe, Asia, and Australia since 2013. Uh, She also happens to be one of the nation's foremost Pilates experts, and she's been featured in Allure, Seventeen, Self, and Elle magazine. So we are in good company when we say welcome to the show, Tandy Gutierrez. Tandy, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. So I got to ask right up front, you've suffered with celiac disease, IBS, you've had a thyroidectomy, but you look amazing. So how did you manage to overcome all of that? Um, It has been a journey, as wellness often is, but when I started to earnestly follow my own intuition and the pings that I was getting in the messaging um, is when I started to get well and to get better. I went through traditional Western medicine. Clearly, I had a thyroidectomy. It, you know, I required a um, diagnosis of my celiac, but every time I went, and even when I finally got a diagnosis, I wasn't really symptomatically getting better. I had more information. Um, the thyroidectomy was supposed to cure everything, right? Mm-hmm. You remove sure. the problem, we medicate, we can regulate the medication so that your thyroid levels are normal. It actually was much easier than living with the thyroid. Um, but What I found was that by tweaking and changing and really anchoring into self-care, this is why I teach what I teach now, because I learned the power of lifestyle habits and self-care that literally changed my life. The biggest piece for me, there were two big pieces. One was my food code, that when I ate in a certain way that my body responded to versus what doctors were telling me to do, nutritionists were telling me to do, or what other programs did. Um, When I really honed in on how my own body responded to things and just valued that and went with that, my entire life changed. Wow. You are going down the incredible rabbit hole that I love because I'm (laughs) very specifically right now. It's it's uncanny. We've Mm -hmm. we've had to push your interview a couple of times. This proves to me that the universe works in truly mysterious ways because it wasn't until very recently that I started talking to Karen about, hey, Karen, I want to make some lifestyle changes that Mm -hmm. include the types of food that I eat, the kind of activity that I do, things like that. So this is perfect timing. Tandy, it I'm so, really is so always here. is right. It, it is. really is, and I'm glad you're going to get some reinforcement, Will, because I have been trying to mm. hear you that way for years. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Well, so, you come know. on, Tandy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you know, we never listen to our our spouses, which is like the irony and the insanity of partnership, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but food code was a number one for me, and then two was listening to my body and only doing 30 minute movement patterns and then earnestly refining it into the astrological energies. And so this is, you know, I teach what healed me and what continues to stabilize me. And my endocrinologist who I love, I love her so much, but she's like, you are my most boring patient for the last (laughs) 10 years. Well, and I'm it, like, isn't that a great badge of honor to carry right? around? <laughs> it really is. So 
those two pieces, and of course, they're long stories and, and wherever you would like to take them or would like to know, but those are the two major components um, that just literally transformed my life and my body. Well, the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> we want to go down both rabbit holes as, as, as quickly as we can, but I do want to go back to the nutritional part of it or the, yeah. the food part of it, but right up front, because we promised it in the introduction to the show, let's talk about the physical aspects of your program that really cycles around phases of the moon and the, the zodiac, right? How does yes. that work? So I was gifted and I say it was a gift. It was definitely a gift from spirit because it was like my brain put two you know, pieces together and I thought, I'm really not this smart, but I think the universe is like pulling me down this path to overlay and see the overlay in these things. Mm -hmm. So the work that I teach is a basic four-week training program. So any personal trainer will tell you the body cycles within these four weeks. And when you start to macro and micro cycle your movement patterns, this is when you get results. This is how athletes function. We have this goal, then we back it up into how many four-week training cycles do we need to get to this goal, right? And then you let your body ebb and flow and really process. So you have two weeks of a training cycle of moderate movement patterns. Then you have a week where you have a constructive rest cycle, okay? And this is, it doesn't mean do nothing. It means that your body gets time to synthesize the work that it's done prior to then generate results, okay? So it's usually light movements. It can look like restorative yoga. It can look like Pilates. It can look like stretching. It can look like walking. Um, but it's not a do nothing. It's a really lighten up the load. Mm -hmm. And then you have a week that asks the most amount of effort from your vessel. And this week you're going to drive, you're going to push, you're going to, you know, go maybe a little one rep pass where your form is really great. You know, like you're going to ask more from your vessel. And this is a basic training pattern. And again, change in the vessel does not happen in our workouts. People think that that's where it happens. It actually happens in the rest stage. So this is where we transition and release fat. This is where we grow and regenerate and produce muscle, right? This is where, this is where the magic happens. Hmm. And so the deeper I got into astrology and the energetics of life, my vessel is very literal in its processing and in its healing. And I've always known I was highly intuitive. And then it was becoming very clear that I was actually very psychic and a channel and the tarot work was coming in so intensely that all of a sudden it just made so much sense the more I learned about the Zodiac, that these energies shift every you know 28 to 30 days as the sun shifts into a certain Zodiac sign. And each Zodiac sign governs a portion of the body in the vessel. And so I started tinkering with like changing up the movement patterns to help balance like Pisces season. Pisces season wants to flow. It needs space. It wants liberation and it wants heart opening and it wants healing, right? So you have literal like fish pose in yoga that's like this huge, you know, chest open, heart and throat opener. That's the and one that you, all, the, all the kids are using for their selfies, right? The fish pose? Yeah, but I don't. Okay. And it has begun. <laughs> <laughs> yes puns and dad jokes i'm in <laughs> um and so like then you have the difference of like say sagittarius season sagittarius rules the hips and the thighs and the legs and is the second athlete of the chart and wants to drive and wants to move so like then you're going to be looking at more lunges and squats and like you know grounded like movement that can really create stability and so I started integrating this quietly and didn't, you know, I wasn't out of the witch's closet yet. I was still coaching and training people and seeing one, how my energetics and energy flow had leveled out in such a beautiful way. Like, cause it's, you can't bloom all the time, right? You can't mm -hmm. drive all the time and you also can't rest all the time and just stretch all the time. I mean, can't you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, uh, but again, here we are talking about like a, a fitness or a wellness goal. Oh. And so then the cycles of things, right? So again, it's mostly focused on the lunar cycles, our moon cycles. Well, hey, guess what? The new moon literally means it's time to rest, <laughs> restoration and practice self-care. This is the quiet dark of the moon. This is our constructive rest week. 
-hmm. And then you have the full moon that from an energetic perspective, like blasts us with energy to launch, finish up or complete its drive. This is totally the week of the full moon. And so I started to cycle each month within these cycles and notice how energy levels improve, how results improve, and how clients attach and connect to this work deeper and longer. Like they stick with this program longer than they've ever done anything else. Mm. Oh, wow. So when you get a client and they, you decide to you know, create this program for them, do you have to wait for them to start until the, it's the right lunar cycle or... You just start on a different. Like, how does We're that very flowy around here in Unicorn Wellness. Mm -hmm. um, it is optimal to begin the program under the new moon. Mm -hmm. It is the easiest, most supported time to begin. Um, so, yes, and because everyone's path is different and people are working with their own energetics, their own charts, their own journey that it's not limited to that. So if someone wants to, they're interested and they're like, oh, I'm just curious, I want to check this out. The way that it's um, programmed, you just come in and press play. Each video has the dates on it. So you just come in because every movement pattern is a multi-level class. So if we were in a brick and mortar studio, it would be multi-level in every single class. And you would go, oh, I can come Tuesday at two o'clock. So I'm walking into that room. And the cueing is such that whatever vessel or body is there just processes those cues, does the very best they can in their own body, and leaves it at that. And if there is something that's really not approachable, it's going to be gone in a second, and you just move on. Okay. So a couple of questions. Let me go one at a time because I just don't want to forget them. Admittedly, I'm not the most physical specimen in the universe, right? But... In every time that I've, I have done some sort of physical activity program, it's been counterintuitive to what you're saying. It's been very much push yourself, push yourself, push yourself all the time. Every time you go into the gym, you're working out, you're working out the hardest you can. You get a spotter and you get that spotter to help you and go push it. Out. So you're seeing something that's totally different than everything that I've ever heard about in terms of physical fitness. And to your point that some people might actually stick to it longer, better, makes sense to a large extent. But then another part of me is asking, some people, present company probably included, we go into the work hard and then the new moon, which is just like easy does it. But then we get back into the really hard work and I'm like, oh God, no, like I'm used to going easy. So I assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, that these programs are tailored specifically because me as a Gemini would have a different pattern as Karen as a cancer. Is that right? Or is it just one size fits all type of programs? It is a one size fits all type of program because it is attuned to the current collective energetics. Ah, got it. So okay. we are all going through those current transits. So right now the sun is in cancer and today the moon is in Gemini. Regardless of our personal charts, we're all experiencing that as a collective. Okay, so you don't do someone's personal chart before they start the workout process. I do not. This, okay. again, was born as a community offering piece um, to simplify. I no longer do one-on-one -on -one training work, mostly because when we launched this and saw the beautiful attachment to it, it was much more efficient and effective than we thought it was going to be, earnestly. Like, as someone who came from a very elite training space of celebrities and like mm -hmm. that world that one-on-one -on -one is everything. When we initially launched an online program, it was not cool. It was 2013. Everybody thought we'd lost our minds. We built the original platform. It wasn't like the plug and play and like everybody's online now. Um, and so there was an element of like, is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I right. felt like I'd, you know, been sold the Kool-Aid too of like, well, the only way for this to really work is if you're one-on-one -on -one and paying these exorbitant amounts of money. You know, I really wanted accessibility for high-end training. Hmm. And it, this is also the juxtaposition of what I do now. It totally works. I mean, yes, are some people going to need and want one-on-one -on -one approach? Absolutely. There's reasons for everything, depending on what goals and what formats. I come from a strength and conditioning background. I don't teach that work anymore. Um, but this is a one-size-fits-all, but magically, 
energetically, it genuinely works for most bodies. Mm. Okay. That, that sounds super interesting. I know that you graciously gave us access to the website prior to the interview, and we promptly did not take advantage of it by any way. Of course. Of course. Because, I didn't know. Yeah, because I was, there was so much going on that we didn't it get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then what kind of equipment does someone need? What kind of exercises does it include? Space requirements? Because we don't have a lot of that either, mm. any of that. So yeah. how could we take advantage of that? So it is made for small spaces. Um, it was launched and currently lives in Brooklyn in small apartment spaces where it is really important to maximize and be able to do things. Um, it's the length and the width of a mat typically that you need. Okay. okay. We have that much room. We do have right? that. Just barely, mm-hmm. but we Just do. Barely, right? yeah. <laughs> we have that. <laughs> it's, it, it's really great for travel also. So when we launched this, I was doing a ton of traveling. Again, this was years ago and, and pre-pandemic. Um that in small, you know, hotel spaces too, it's like, you may not even have a mat. You got to tell from the bathroom, you got to make it work. So mm-hmm. half of the movement patterns, each cycle have no props necessary. It is just body weight and body alignment. And typically half of them have a prop that we cycle through. So I have members that stay with me for a lifetime. It's really not, you know, like you can come in and see if it's going to be a fit for you, but people really tend to make a home. It's really for them or it's not. So we will use a set of yoga blocks. We will use a yoga strap. We will use um, a resistance band. We will use a Pilates magic circle, which is not as common, but if you stick around, you're going to want one and it's very easily accessible now and a foam roller. So these are the five props that we cycle through. And so if you do become a member and you create a home here, they're all less than $20 investments and typically very much less and can last for forever. So one of my signature pieces is that I can generate results that you would typically pay a lot more for on the Pilates equipment or in strength and conditioning equipment at home with these five props. And how long does it typically take for someone to begin to see results? If they're earnestly, it? that's going to be about four weeks. That's a thirty day. That's a full cycle mm-hmm. before you really see transitions take place. But you will feel them much sooner than that. And are the workouts the same for, say, someone like I don't know, like Will, and uh, someone in their twenties, a menopausal woman? Like, are they? Is it the same thing for everyone? It is. And I know that sounds crazy because we're all taught that we should take beginner, intermediate, advanced, and that vessels are so different. Mm -hmm. They are different. Everyone will have certain specifications and unique qualities. My cueing is earnestly so good that, again, it's about listening to the cues, Mm -hmm. making those connections in your own vessel at the pace and the rate that you're able to, and then leaving it at that and what is, <laughs> this is just me being curious, what is like the hardest thing to do? <laughs> Starting. Um, I was going to say the hardest, I, this is going to be a little theoretical, right? But I believe the hardest thing is trusting that the work that I teach mm-hmm. works. I mean, just like you're reflecting. So like when Will said, you know, he's used to this drive, drive, drive. It, we are, okay you know, big, bold statements here. We're a toxic masculinity, patriarchal culture. We are taught that if we are not working hard, you know, we'd have zero worth, that we have to earn our worth. And we better be driving ourselves into the ground in order to achieve or gain anything. I do not, I do not teach that work. I teach earnestly the balance Mm -hmm. and mostly the divine feminine work. So I teach a very tiny and mighty process, meaning It will take you longer, perhaps, to see results with this program, Mm -hmm. but I am teaching and training to the long game, preventing and healing injury along the way, and again, like micro-dosing the movements so Mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, hey, that's not so bad. Oh, hey, that's not so bad. Oh, that's okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I've been here for 90 days, and then all of a sudden, these things are happening. So you can be a total beginner. Yes. And do it and not, it won't be too intimidating. There aren't any like moves that you're like, that's not happening. Well, I think there will be things for sure, you know, here and there that you're like, oh, the fuck that's going to happen in my vessel today. (laughs) Absolutely not. You know, and it's like, who's the skinny bitch teaching that's been doing this for 25 years? Of course she can do it. (laughs) But 
there is this aspect. I am a teacher at heart. And I find it very important to remember to be a student and to remember that you're not going to be able to do everything and you're not supposed to be. This is a relationship and a conversation and a dialogue with your vessel. And there is a lot of deconstructing the ego and deconstructing the internal patriarchy that happens in this format. And so you kind of have to leave or learn that this is as much as I can do today Mm -hmm. in this exercise. Right. I'm good good with that. Right. Right. Really it's so beautiful. <laughs> you gotta understand. And, <laughs> I know you're good with that. You're a little too good with that. Sometimes you gotta push yourself a little bit. You do, and it's <laughs> the, again. This is a process. People aren't accustomed to this method of training, but this mm-hmm. is how I would treat and did treat every client that came in with me. You know, bodies are a mixture of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. No matter what vessel you're in, mm-hmm. some people can do incredibly what would be considered advanced movements, but they've never done Pilates before, you know? Mm -hmm. And then people who are super fit and so strong, they think they can do all of it. Meanwhile, they cannot manage a basic movement pattern, right? And I fall into that category. I was a dancer, (laughs) I was an athlete, and I'd go into classes and be like, oh, I'm going to totally rock this. And it was like, oh, hell no, that did not work. (laughs) Right, right. Now, just to clarify, when you mentioned that you work with the feminine energy, that does not mean that males can't take this program too, right? This is for a unisex program that just happens to live in the feminine energy type of movements. Correct. This is a wonderful that you're clarifying this language. So I would very much say that I'm teaching in a non-binary space. Um, as humans, we have language that gets attached to divine feminine and divine masculine. From an astrology perspective, we're going to be speaking in lunar and solar qualities. And I try to soup through all of those cues and all of that verbiage because everyone is coming from a different point on the path. And so it, we have very very brand new people to languages of energetics, right? And then we have people who are deep in the energies. So this genuinely has nothing to do with gender specific at all. We are a very non-binary space. Um, And again, the cueing that I use tries to be very non-binary. But when we're talking about energetics at play, it inevitably comes into it because... It does relate to the patriarchy. It does relate to our concepts of earning worth versus receiving, you know, body movement being a pleasurable experience rather than a place to beat ourselves up and be Mm -hmm. into submission. That makes great sense. Mm -hmm. And your programs actually isn't just movements, right? Every month, if you get a subscription, you get the workouts and things like that, but you also get a 15-minute energy healing. New and full moon tarot readings, new and full moon energy forecasts. You are firmly in the woo of everything. We're not just talking about a program you can get at a gym, right? This is meant for people who are much more in tune with and speak to their souls on a regular basis. If you are into spirituality, metaphysics, this might be the perfect program for you, right? Absolutely. This is genuinely about self-care. And to me, you know, what is the self the essence of you, which is your soul. Mm -hmm. This is really soul care. It sounds very holistic. Absolutely. It's genuinely, you know, when they talk to entrepreneurs about like, how did you come up with this idea? And why does this work? And why do you do what you're doing? And, you know, the, I think the best answer is to solve what you want to see in the world, like what you wished there was or a space that you can fill. And for me, I like to be efficient. I like to cover a lot of ground. I would love a one-stop shop where I felt safe, you know, where I know that I attune to the teacher, the mentor, the educator, and I trust, you know. And what I find with my clients is they often don't want to go other places. I feel safe here, and I like this environment, and I'm already logged in, and, like, why do I need to go search for my astrology, for my tarot, for my... Reiki healing, if they want those things. Right. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, uh, Karen, you used the term holistic healing, and we started the interview at the very top talking about eating well as well. Do your programs include that as well, or is that a separate thing that's not quite there yet? No, it's been there for a very long time. So I take a very light touch to fuel and um, 
nourishment to the vessel these days, but I have a 41-day food reset. Um, it is accessible through the membership. There is also access through the membership to, I think it's over 300 gluten-free and dairy-free recipes. Um, I do not structure it like a program like people are accustomed to. Some people find that very frustrating um, because I don't prescribe to that. I, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. Um, what I do help people do is crack their personal food code. So when food is is becoming the path that they need to connect with, they can go into the archives of all the recipes and just try things. Oh, I'm going to try this for breakfast. Oh, I'm going to try this for lunch. Oh, that sounds cool. Let's do this this weekend, right? And then when it really resonates to do a very deep healing of their wellness, they can embark on the 41-day food reset. And it will look like a synthesis of things that may be common to people now. The first five days appear to be an elimination diet. And then pieces are added in, right, every four days. And then you can take notes and journal. How does my body react or respond? How do I feel when I eat this? And what I did earnestly with the 41-day food reset is I took all of my experiences from all of the things I tried in order to heal my IBS, right, to get the symptoms to stop that didn't work. But I did a ton of research. I did a lot of just tinkering in my own vessel and then created what I consider a do no harm. It really becomes like farm food that's like nourishing and like as unmessed with from Mother Earth as possible. And then Again, you layer in at a, do, you know, what does the least amount of harm when you first layer it back in? Then what's the one that does the most amount of harm? And by the time you get to these pieces, you have a, a very different relationship to your vessel, to your emotional eating patterns, and to how you're fueling yourself. You know, how, how are you nourishing? So there is an intuitive aspect to it, but I really think it's a blend between, you know, Ayurvedic, traditional Chinese medicine and the autoimmune protocol. Mm, yeah, sounds very much like a functional medicine type of approach. I mean, that's, that's really truly what I think we all need right now. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. Again, very timely in our conversations. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, food really truly is our most powerful medicine. And years ago, it, it was one of the leading pieces of my work. Um, it, it's gone through a stage of, honestly, in social media, it, it strangely brought the most amount of haters to, to my doorstep, where it was just too noisy. And I thought, if it's not for you, it's not for you. And when people are ready to do it, then it's here and it's a resource. And it is so valid and people have really genuinely magical experiences with it that like, again, people are worried because it's an elimination diet. And if they come from disordered eating patterns and backgrounds, like I'm a dancer, body dysmorphia is no stranger to me. And this actually heals every, all the work that I do is healing, but it's going to take longer. So like, you know, Karen, when you were asking about like the length of seeing results, I no longer really discuss it in the, that language, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to feel better. When we feel better, then we're willing to do things a little bit longer. I don't really care what anybody's vessel looks like. I know as a trainer, I can feed somebody the same food, give them the same workout, and their bodies will look completely different. Mm -hmm. Like, I am, will you get stronger? Yes. Will you transition and release additional weight from the vessel that is not meant to be there anymore and it's time for it to go? Yes. But I care about how you feel and how you are engaging and relating and talking to yourself from that internal space. So I really teach a slow process, no matter where it is. And when it comes to the food, do you recommend, that seems kind of silly though, organic food? Because I feel like now the food that we get, no matter what it is, I just feel like it's toxic. <laughs> you know, even with the vegetables, you're just scrubbing them incessantly to get the pesticides off. Now they're saying even organic isn't really organic. And I mean, have you noticed a big shift from when you started with food to now and the yeah. quality of the food that we have? Absolutely. Um, my 41 day food reset is absolutely based on as much organic as your 
budget and lifestyle will allow. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that initially when I wrote the food reset, I never intended to share it with the public. It was for me. I, Mm -hmm. I, I was afraid of dying. I'll be real honest. Mm -hmm. And I was losing weight at an exponential rate and I had chronic diarrhea and I couldn't digest like anything. Like this was before Mm -hmm. the celiac diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So I was willing to do anything. And we definitely had conversations in our household about the amount, like the cost, the investment Mm -hmm. in an organic full-time diet. Mm -hmm. I remember the day specifically. And we've never looked back. Mm -hmm. I really believe that this is this is genuinely health insurance. Like there is no question it is scientifically proven that the quality of our soils, particularly in the United States, is completely contaminated. So Mm -hmm. like it just absolutely is. And so that soil, you know, is absorbed into the nutrients that we eat, into the foods that we grow. And I am a major advocate, you know, for clean animal proteins, wild caught, pasture raised, grass-fed only. And I know that people, it is a very privileged perspective and I totally understand that. So when I teach it, I say that you invest as much as you can because a transition is going to be better than none, Mm -hmm. right? To more whole foods. But for me, it was a matter of life and death. I knew there were autoimmune issues. The thyroid was already blown out. Then they removed it and everything got worse. And so, yeah. And that was because the medication they put me on had gluten in it. So this is another layer. Like I was really in a space of I will do anything. And I'm a tourist son, so quality matters, you know. Mm -hmm. And we advocated for this. And I will I will even, you know, a little kind of a personal share. For a period of time, we have functioned without health insurance and we have committed to organic foods and a certain food code in our household and we have not needed medical care in those ways because we are doing the preventative measures and so i know people with medical issues are like well we're paying for these things and these things and these medications and this and you'll hear it from so many wellness practitioners but when you transition your food to as clean as you can Mm -hmm. you know better is better that is my main mantra, that profound foundational healings happen in the mm. vessel that then you don't need earnestly those medications and those other things anymore. So the cost will shift. Where are you going to invest in your health? Right. And well, I guess for me, part of my frustration is, you know, my, we had my daughter and that was it. Everything was organic for years. And I'm reading about how puberty is developing in the kids that are drinking non-organic milk and this and that. And I did everything right. And it all still happened. You know, she went through puberty early and all of this stuff. And it's, you know, it's like, well, you want to eat more fish, but the fresh fish has mercury in it. And it's so frustrating. So how do you keep people motivated to not just give up? Because it is hard. It is hard to find the good stuff. And when you can find it, it's hard to afford. I think that I just keep reminding people that better is better. And it is about the tiny and the mighty. And that as humans, we we strive to do things right and perfectly. And that's just not a part of being human. Like it's a mess. Shit still happens. There Mm -hmm. are still stories, you know, we've got, you know, pollutants in our ecosystem and parabens and pollutants in, you know, our body care products, like everything in our house has been transformed. And I know that some people look and go, she's extreme. I also know that everything in my health and wellness changed when I committed to it. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's a tough question of like how to keep people motivated because, you know, within the ecosystem, because you're not always going to be motivated to do something like you're just not there's I'm not always motivated. Like, (laughs) let's be honest, it can be exhausting and humaning is exhausting right now. I'm always motivated. (laughs) Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm always motivated to do nothing. <laughs> and you're you know, really good at that. I am, so good at that. Hey, everyone has their skills. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but yeah. Well, I actually think, or I mean, you know, all jokes aside, I think that our perfectionist nature to get things right and to continue to do things over and over and over, mm-hmm. actually, we have a lot to learn by learning to pause, do less, maybe do nothing. I mean, there's that's where the healing happens. And so I think when people get frustrated, I actually tell them, to pause, mm-hmm. to reevaluate. How are you feeling now? What is your body calling you to do now? Maybe the focus is to go meditate or to go get on the mat or to maybe 
you, it's too stressful to deal with right now. Take a pause. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, traditional Chinese medicine will tell you not to eat a meal and have, you know, challenging conversations because it will disrupt the digestion, right? Like the energy that we infuse into things. Uh, is that what I'm doing wrong? Right. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry, Tandy. <laughs> no, I just, it's so true because I found, you know, I'm, I'm a recovering perfectionist and, mm -hmm. you know, I did want to do everything right. And it's a very challenging thing to actually stop and go, I don't need to do it right. There's no such thing as perfect. It is okay to pause. There are lessons in the pause. Yeah, and and we're, we're all doing the best we can. It is hard to let go of that. When I was 13, the award I won in, in eighth grade was most meticulous. <laughs> yeah. So that was like, you know, the good thing. So yeah. that can maybe will, maybe that gives you some insight. It, it, and, and that might be the reason why you can't sit down and meditate now. Maybe. And that's maybe <laughs> that's the reason why I struggle sometimes with the way you clean the kitchen. But, <laughs> but I'm trying to let that go. And they're saying, okay, it doesn't have to be done my way as long as it's getting done. Wow. That now it's just a clarity that's just come <laughs> from this conversation. But that teacher probably like put something on me, you know, like I, I took Absolutely. that term and, and applied it to myself and, yeah. and I was screwed. <laughs> but it's true. The tiny things that attach to us. And this yeah. is where, you know, the healing work, I just, for, for body work and wellness, I don't say I teach fitness anymore, although it can be your fitness program. Mm -hmm. It's just. The, our concepts, I really want to help deconstruct to move yeah. into a softer space because okay. it just, the stress of trying to do it perfectly will and can interrupt the progress that we're making. We have to value and celebrate the progress. Yeah. And enjoy. Yeah. Instead of working all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's important to go back to the fact that I don't want people to miss the message. Right? I've watched documentary after documentary about how when people change their diet and make it much more holistic, how miraculous things happen. People have lost tumors that have been in their body. They recover from cancer. They recover. There's the wellness that comes from just making a drastic shift in what you put in your body mm -hmm. is massive. So if you've not had the opportunity to hear or see these documentaries or this informational, then at the very least, listen to what Tandy's saying, because it is truly, it, it, there's so much evidence that's been gathered up of late that shows how much this really affects us, that it's really no longer something that we can ignore. And Will, you see it with me all the time. So I cook a lot. It's it's kind of my thing. And I don't try to not use salt or try to new, but but I, I don't use a lot of canned goods. I don't use a lot of processed stuff, hardly at all. But every single time we go out to eat, every single time, I wake up the next morning and I'm so bloated, I can't take the rings off my fingers. Oh. My hands ache every single time without a doubt. Doesn't happen when I'm cooking at home. Yep. Yeah. 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 We so just, we talk about this all the time um, because I don't, I don't really eat out anymore. And again, mm -hmm. there's a lot of side eyes or judgments to it. But I just know I, I'll be in pain for at least two weeks, you know, mm -hmm. like it can be. The United States doesn't tend to take, um, and I'm saying the United States because we've traveled, we've lived other places and spaces. Mm -hmm. The soil is different. The food is different. And the reaction from restaurants is completely different. Mm -hmm. So I just tend to not eat out. Like I'll, when I go, I'm, I'm happy to participate. I'll eat before or there's certain things I know I can order that don't get screwed up and don't affect me. Mm -hmm. But it's not worth the risk and it's not worth the discomfort to me anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is a place in the space of like for me, boundaries and standing my empowerment, like their comfort of what they want to serve or not listen to me is not worth my discomfort on mm -hmm. the other end. And it's just it's true. We use a a lot of dirty oils that have omega threes in them in restaurants. It's what's cheapest. It's what's available. And people just don't understand how that affects the vessel. And I just like to pull back to basics, right? We are in a culture that thinks that going to, you know, whole nutritious foods is this epic shift <laughs> when really, you know, how is the physical vessel designed to thrive? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know people hate the car analysis or metaphor, but it's just so true. Like if you've got a car that needs unleaded gas, if you, you know, would go put diesel in it, 
what happens? It wah, quits. Wah. Yeah, it quits <laughs> working. <laughs> so here we go. We're a culture of food products and mm. marketing and entertainment. These mm-hmm. have nothing to do with nutrition or how the vessel runs or thrives. Mm-hmm. Now, can there be a blend of that? Yes. Can there be a balance of that? Of course. But a body is doing its very best to stay alive and to function, to keep you upright. And there comes a point where it just, it's like, it breaks. It goes, no, because you've just fed me chemical after chemical after chemical mm-hmm. after chemical. That is not how I thrive. Again, this is why paleo, I'm not strictly paleo, but I do think it gets as close to being best because if you were out in the woods in a primal capacity and there's no grocery store and there's no marketing, what do you eat? This Our vessel's very primal. It hasn't progressed. It hasn't evolved to our technologies and all of the flavoring and all of the like wacky chemicals we think are okay. These are things that are outlawed in other countries, by the way. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, very yep. true. So, yeah. you know, we we go to Spain. This is like the, you know, and like <laughs> I'm posting Instagram pictures inside all these restaurants and everybody's like, how are you doing this? And I'm like, it's not. There, it's not as contaminated, and they're all using olive oil instead of vegetable oils. God, Tandy, I said it now at least 12 times. I'm saying for the 13th time because that 13th is always the charm. <laughs> this is such a timely conversation that I'm really excited to check your program out mm-hmm. now. I know that you extended an invitation for us before, and we squandered it, but na- maybe now's the time to to dive into it. So I'm going to definitely take a look. If someone wants to be involved with your program or reach out to you, what's the best way for someone to do that? Best way to do it is to head over to unicornwellnessstudio.com. And I think right now we have the little secret special offer that gives 30 days access, totally free, just with an email address drop. And I really encourage, yeah, I do want to make it as simple as possible. There are enough hurdles, you know, and in investing in things and, you know, is a big deal. And I, I don't take that lightly. And so if I had a brick and mortar studio, I'd be like, come take a class, come hang out with me for the day. So it's the same thing, you know, just come hang out, come explore. If you have questions, it's really easy to find me on Instagram. It's Tandy underscore Gutierrez. And if you have questions about modifying, you know, the movement patterns or about um, the food reset, you just ask me. The reset is also available in the Unicorn Wellness Handbook, and that is available on Amazon. So if it's just the food right now that's of interest to someone, it is a physical book. You can download it on Kindle as well, and you can begin there. So our members come in. Some it is for the food reset, some it is for the movement. Whatever calls you is available. Mm. Well, perfect. <clears throat> you just said the magic word free. <laughs> <laughs> I love free. I love giving things away. Right. Well, we're going to add those links directly to our show notes. So if you're listening to this on your phone right now, all you have to do is hit that info button on the top right corner or wherever you might find it on your phone. You see the show notes, there will be links there, hyperlinks. Just click that hyperlink. It'll get you connected directly to Tandy. And if you're listening to this on the radio, of course, the place to go is skepticmetaphysician.com where you can actually go to the episode page, find Tandy's episode, and you'll have the show notes and links directly there. Tandy, such a pleasure, an absolute pleasure talking to you today. I'm really glad we were able finally to connect. Thank you so much for taking the time to share Uh, your expertise with everyone that's listening. This has been fantastic. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. You all are a pleasure. I love you both so much. (laughs) Well, thank you. The feeling is definitely (laughs) mutual. And thank you for coming along on this journey of discovery. We'd really love it if you would do us the honor of helping us get the show into the hands of those that could really benefit from it. So if you know someone that could enjoy our conversations, please be sure to just share the show with them. And if you're listening to this on the radio and you missed something, not to worry, all of our episodes, including this one, well, they can be found at skepticmetaphysician.com, where you can also watch the video or even send us email or voicemail directly from the site. We absolutely love feedback and would appreciate hearing from you. Now, we hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have. That's all for now. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Until then, take care.